Now, how do we measure current and voltage in a circuit? Uh, even in the di digital age, we use uh, the same concepts. But let me show you this with an analog multimeter. You notice the, uh, this one's been <laughs> stripped down just a little bit. Uh, there used to be a needle here. And there's a bar magnet right here. And there's a coil. It's called a moving coil in here. You can just see maybe the copper wires moving around the coil. As I move from one range to another run function, all I'm doing on the back is I'm moving to a different circuit with different resistors. So let's talk about how this works. First off, uh, the analog voltmeter. Here's my circuit down here. I've got a DC battery or DC power supply and the load, which is hard to read but it really does say load. And I hook up the voltmeter in parallel. Here's my voltmeter right here. So I put the leads on in parallel, and I've got the meter resistor. And the meter resistor is huge. I mean, it's like the meter resistor is way, way bigger than the load resistance. I mean, if this is like, you know, this might be uh, 20 ohms or 100 ohms, and this is going to be like 2.5 million ohms. So if you're an electron, and you're heading through this circuit, you can either go up this path or this way. And this way has got 100 ohms, and this way has got 2.5 million ohms. So most of the flow is going to go this way. But the nice thing is, the voltage across the load is the same as the voltage drop across the resistor, because they're in parallel. So the voltage across the load is equal to the voltage through the meter. Okay. Now, here's the clever bit. This is a permanent magnet, just a bar magnet. And this is a spring-loaded needle. And it measures, you know, it's, it's got numbers up here and it tells you uh, what, are the, what kind of current or, what, in this case, what kind of voltage you have. Now, this wire comes up and it wraps around. This cylinder is attached to the needle. And the wire wraps around the cylinder many, many, many times. If I looked at it from the side, it would look more like this, but much denser. Lots of copper wire. And when you wrap the copper wire around and you run a current through it, it's an electromagnet. So I've got this, as I run current through here, I've got, I uh, turn on the magnetic field. And the bigger the current, the stronger the magnet. And as the magnetic field increases, it drives it drives this to rotate towards this pole of the permanent magnet and it moves the needle. So what you do is you just set um, full scale. You say that's going to be when I've got like, you know, maybe uh, 20 microamps of current flowing through. That'll be a strong enough magnetic field to drive this full scale. And then I just set all the other ranges that way. I can switch with a circuit, uh, with a knob, I can switch to different resistances and so I can adjust the scale. For example, let's say um, Example, voltmeter. Um, let's say, there's my needle moving this direction, that the maximum current through the moving coil, I'll call it MC, because this is the coil, it's a moving coil. Okay, maximum current through the moving coil is uh, 20 microamps. And let's say the resistance of the meter that I've got hooked up right there is uh, two and a half million ohms. Well, what would the full scale voltage be equal to? What number should I put when it's pegged all the way over here? What's that reading? Well, the voltage for full scale is going to be the full scale current of the moving coil times the resistance of the meter that you've switched to. And that's going to be 20 microamps. Well, I'll write instead of micro. Micro means times 10 to the minus 6. So I'll write 20 times 10 to the minus 6 amps times 2.5 times 10 to the 6 ohms. And I wind up with 50, 10 to the minus 6 and 6 is 0, 50 volts. So that would be your 50 volt scale. That's a pretty sensu way to do things. Now how about the ammeter? Oh, and by the way, it's linear, uh, the magnetic field. So if I was wondering what half scale would be, um, 
I'd be running 10 microamps and that would be straight up would be 25 volts. So it's a linear relation. So you just put the needle on. It's pretty nice. Now for the ammeter, I want to measure current. I run it a little bit differently. This uh, right here is the moving coil side and I run Let's see, I've got to hook it up in series too. But I'm going to run a shunt here, and the shunt resistor is usually a fuse. There's the shunt resistance, and I've got to hook this up in parallel, so I'll just run it like that. Stick my resistor here for the load. Yeah. So now I've got an ammeter. Notice that now the shunt resistor and the resistance in the moving coil, which is not much, but it's more than the shunt, they're in parallel. So the voltage drop across the moving coil is the same as the voltage drop across the shunt. Now, with Ohm's law, voltage is current times resistance. So the current through the shunt times the resistance of the shunt is equal to the current through the moving coil times the resistance of the moving coil. It's designed so that the resistance of the shunt is way, way less than the resistance through the moving coil. That means that most of the flow is going to go through the shunt. So let's see. I solve for the shunt current. And the shunt current is pretty much the total current because it's so much bigger than the moving coil current. And that's equal to, if I solve for the shunt, that's equal to the, the current through the moving coil, and we know what like full scale is times the resistance of the moving coil divided by the resistance of the shunt. So uh, let's see, the shunt would be much less. So if, uh, if the moving coil current was uh, 20 microamps and the resistance of the moving coil was um, maybe 2 ohms, and the resistance in the shunt is 0.02 ohms, and then the current would read, uh, let's see, it would be 20 microamps times the resistance in the movie coil, which is 2 ohms, divided by 0.02 ohms, which would be 2 times 10 to the minus, let's see, 20 microns, that's 40 microns, 2 times 4 times, 2 times 10 to the minus 5, that's 2, 2 times 10 to the minus 3 amps, which would be 2 milliamps. There are lots of other transducers. We've, we've talked about, we've talked about a few basic ones. But, I mean, these concepts, even just the concepts we've talked about, they're applied to all kinds of different situations. Um, when you drive up to a traffic light, you've got a little, underneath the, underneath the pavement, there's a little loop of wire attached to the post where the traffic light is. And it's running an AC current. And when your car pulls up, the conductors in your car, they feel that magnetic field sloshing, and it sloshes them, and that causes a back slosh, which depresses the current and tells the uh, traffic, traffic light that, that there's a car there and it should change it. Uh, so many of these concepts are applied so many different ways. So if you look at a transducer and it looks like it's magic, it's probably something that we can all understand.